Hi guys, it's Angie with Fun Endeavors Tie-Dye Lab. Today let's make an ice dyed hoodie. I'm going to do part geo, part gravity dye on this hoodie. So I'm going to divide it in half. And I'm going to divide it diagonally. So I'm using a straight edge and going from one corner of the hoodie up to the opposite shoulder. I'm going to draw a diagonal line. By the way, I'm not including that bottom band of the hoodie in this, just because it makes it a little easier. The first thing that I'm going to do is fan fold the diagonal line and tie it with some sinew. I don't care if this line is white, but I do want there to be some sort of a dividing line between the geodes and the gravity dye portion. So you can tie this with kite string if you want, whatever you'd like. I'm just choosing to use sinew because I'm getting ready to use it for the geodes. I want to tie the geodes on the top portion of the hoodie. And I'm going to tie them the way I tie most of the geodes that I do. I'm going to find an area where I'd like for the center to be, slide my hand down to where I want the bottom or the outer portion of the geode to be, and start tying from there. Like normal, I'm going to vary the distance between the different lines in the geode, and I want to try to keep the folds a little bit messy. It's a little more challenging with the hoodie because the fabric is pretty thick and it's actually kind of soft. So I'm having trouble with it not just kind of sliding all over where I don't want it to slide. It's not quite holding the messiness of the fabric so that I can get those more funky folds. It isn't really wrinkling. And so it's a little bit more difficult to get the messier folds for the geodes. It's going to be great though when you go to wear it because it's not going to be really wrinkly. But I really like the fabric that wrinkles pretty bad when I do geodes because that's how I can get some of the more funky folds is it just kind of wrinkles and folds in on itself. So I'm having to create some of those with my hands. And I'm also splitting some of these geodes. If you'll notice I kind of took part of the fabric off to one side formed it into two different areas and I'm tying two different areas. So I have one geode which is splitting off into two different geodes partway through the geode. I think that's going to give it a little bit more of an interesting look too. I'm going to continue this tying process until I get down to the line that I tied with sinew. So I know I said earlier that you could probably tie that initial line with just some kite string or something like that. And you could, but as I've been tying the geodes, I've realized that it probably is best that I did tie it with sinew because I'm doing a whole lot of tugging on the fabric, trying to make sure that I get up close to that line. I'm a little bit concerned if I tied it with something like kite string or just used rubber bands or something, I probably would mess up that fold. In case you're wondering, this hoodie is one of the buffalo hoodies from Costco that everybody talks about, and it is super soft. It's a really nice hoodie as far as the feel of it goes. As far as the fabric content, it's 70% viscous, 16% cotton, 11% polyester, and 3% elastane. So it should dye up really nicely. This is the first one of these that I've done. But the, like I said, the fabric feels really nice and it isn't wrinkly. It's very soft. It's very pliable. It makes it a little bit more difficult for this design, but it's going to feel wonderful to wear. So I'm a little curious to see how this dies up.
Once I have this half of the hoodie covered in geodes, I'm going to take my sinew and do some just random lines in between the geodes. I want to put a little bit of definition in between all the geodes where it's not just kind of some blank space or empty space. It's not really going to be a geode, but just a few sinew lines are going to give just a little definition in that area when I dye the hoodie. The definition lines that I put in there too also kind of help flatten this fold and make it a little bit easier to apply the dye. I haven't tied the sleeve yet, but I'm going to tie that the same way I tied the rest of the geodes. So if you watch a lot of my videos, you know that I don't like to dye geodes when they're still wet or damp and have not completely dried out. I'm going to kind of break that rule with this hoodie. I tied up the hoodie and by the time I got around to dyeing it, it was already dark outside. So I did go ahead and let it dry overnight, but I didn't let it completely and entirely dry out. If you want more information about why I let folds like geodes dry out completely before I dye them. I have a tie dye blog on my website and I have a specific blog post about that topic. There's a link below this video in the description to my website if you want to check out the blog post. Okay, so for this one I've chosen some blues and grays. And like I mentioned earlier, I'm going to gravity dye one half of the shirt. So I've taken a metal shelving unit, which I have, and placed one of the plastic dish pans, which I purchased from the Dollar Tree Dollar Store, on top with the geode portion inside the dish pan. Then I left the other portion that I'm going to gravity dye hanging over the edge. I have another one of these dish pans right underneath to catch any of the runoff from the dye. Then I'm going to spray the shirt pretty well with some soda ash solution, just so that the dye sticks a little bit better. I'm going to put the dye underneath the ice, but I'm not going to place the dye in real specific sections of the geodes. I'm going to randomly place it over the top. Let me go ahead and list the colors that I'm using. I'll have them listed down below too in the description for this video. I'm using Steel Blue Gray from Custom Colors, Sky Blue from Grateful Dyes, Blueberry from Pro Chemical and Dye, Nightfall and Iron Gray, which are both from Dye Spin. Then I'm using Charcoal Gray, Brilliant Blue, Silver Lining. Then I'm going to use Mom Jeans and Blue Kachu, which are both special edition colors. I don't think they're available anymore. And these are all from Dharma. After I've applied all the dye to the top, I'm going to go ahead and add a pretty generous portion of soda ash over the top of the dye. I'm going to add quite a bit of ice to this container and I want to make sure I still have plenty of soda ash remaining in the hoodie to react with the dye. If you can't tell, I'm going to go ahead and muck dye this hoodie, which is basically where you just leave the fabric inside of where the ice is melting and mixing with the dye. That's all muck is, is just that runoff from the mixing ice and dye. I really debated with myself which way to go ahead and dye the geode portion, whether to muck dye it or rack dye it. And I finally just decided I'd try it this way and see if it worked out. Like I said, I added quite a bit of ice to the top. 
And then over the top of the whole entire thing, I'm adding some of Dharma's silver lining. I forgot to mention, I didn't actually put that color on the hoodie. I'm adding it over the top. So the day I did this, it was still really hot outside. It was probably in the 90s. And so the ice melted pretty quickly. After the ice melted, I just left the hoodie alone. I was a little concerned at first because it didn't look like a whole lot of that dye was wicking up to the outer portion of the hoodie, the part that I left hanging over the edge to gravity dye. But eventually it kind of got some momentum and it started pulling it up through that hoodie. I came back and added just a little bit more ice. I could see a little bit of undissolved dye left sitting on top and all the geodes were not under the ice. Part of that is because as it was pulling some of that muck down through the rest of the hoodie, it was lowering my muck levels in my container. So I just thought I would go ahead and add some more ice. I didn't really want to move the hoodie, so I just laid a plastic container lid over the top of this wash tub and left the hoodie outside all night. I touched it and the hoodie was really pretty wet, even the part that was hanging over the edge, so I just left it alone. It had processed long enough that if it went ahead and dried out, it would be just fine, but I really didn't think it would dry out in that amount of time. There was a lot of liquid in the hoodie. So since it's heading into fall, it's starting to get dark a little bit sooner than it was. And when it started to get dark, the dye hadn't reached the very outer edges of the hoodie yet. It was still just part way down. And I was okay with that. I honestly contemplated whether or not I should take it out of the muck and just leave it where it was at because I thought it looked cool. But I went ahead and left it overnight and by the next morning the dye had made it all the way to the outer edges of the hoodie, which I'm okay with that too. One thing though that I did notice is when I picked the hoodie up to take it in to rinse it out, there wasn't a whole lot of muck left in the container. But there was quite a bit of muck in the container down below underneath the hoodie. So basically, the hoodie was just kind of a pipeline to transfer the muck from one container to the other one. I was hoping that that would work, but I wasn't entirely sure because, like I said, this fabric is a little bit different. It's a softer fabric, and it's viscous and cotton, not just cotton. So this was kind of an experiment to see whether or not this technique would work. I've never tried it, but theoretically it should have, so... I'm glad that it did. I rinsed the hoodie the way I normally do by rinsing it in cold water really well to rinse out the soda ash. Then I untied the hoodie and warmed the water up to hot and continued rinsing to rinse out the excess dye that didn't bond with the fabric. Instead of just continuing to rinse for a long time, I ran some really hot water in my utility sink, added a little bit of blue Dawn dish detergent to the water, and just allowed the hoodie to soak. I think that blues can sometimes be some of the hardest colors to get totally rinsed out. So when the water cooled off, I changed out the water and I continued that soaking process until the water was almost clear. Then I put the hoodie into my washing machine along with some of Dharma's professional textile detergent and I washed it using a hot water cycle. Then after the hoodie was washed and dried, this is what it looks like. Okay, so what do you guys think? I really like this one. I think it turned out looking really cool. Because it was the muck that got soaked up and deposited down below that line, there's not a lot of color variation. There is a little bit of streaking, but for the most part, the bottom portion of the shirt is kind of all one color. Right up next to the line, there is some color variation. I mean, you can see it as it kind of wisps out into that lighter blue color on the bottom. But I think the top looks really cool too. All the different variations of the blues and then the colors that come in from the grays. I think it's just really a cool hoodie. So my husband and both of my kids thought it was really awesome and when you live in the house with a tie dyer, you see a whole lot of shirts. And my oldest son actually said that he would totally wear this one and was a little bit disappointed when I told him that it was a woman's hoodie. And of course, he was even more disappointed when he felt it and felt how nice and soft it was. I was pleasantly surprised that the ties actually died too. 
You know, some of them like the Hanes Ultimate Cotton or whatever the Hanes sweatshirts are called. They don't normally die. And I really like the fact that this one did. It just kind of blends in with the rest of the hoodie. And I like that. I think it looks cool. I've included some close-ups so you can see the geodes a little bit better, some of the different die splits, and even some of the really cool geodes that have like double centers. I was also pleasantly surprised that even though this hoodie was damp when I dyed it, I got really good color saturation. There is some white left in the hoodie, but it's not huge streaks of white like you get sometimes when you dye something when it's too damp. In my opinion, it's just enough white to look interesting. But what do you guys think? Do you like this hoodie? What's your opinion of it? Drop me some comments down below and let me know. And if you haven't tried them yet, I would definitely try some of the Buffalo hoodies from Costco. I'm really pleasantly surprised at how well they dye and how nice they feel. And if you guys have enjoyed watching me make this hoodie and experiment with this design for the first time, I sure would appreciate it if you would like the video and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thank you all for watching and I hope you have a great day.